Z2 by the Devin Townsend Project. So big that it couldn't fit on just one disc, so it ends up being a double album. And my first review of this, well, I didn't like it. So I decided to turn it into two. One for each disc on the album, considering there are big differences between the two. The first of which, the one that we're talking about that you see in the description above, is disc one. It's sky blue. This is actually a Devin Townsend Project album. This actually has nothing to do with the Ziltoid the Omniscient uh, idea, the Ziltoid the Omniscient saga. So this is actually an independent album. It's almost like Heavy Devi decided, well, I have all this other great material. I'm going to release it on this disc. And I'm going to have the Ziltoid disc on the other disc and discs everywhere. Frisbees. So... First of all, this idea is just kind of insane, which makes perfect sense because Devin Townsend. But secondly, it's what happened with Casualties of Cool, which I know a lot of people are saying, well, I know review, blah, blah, blah. I explained that on the Facebook page. If you're not a member of the Facebook page, then you didn't get the explanation. You should join the Facebook page and look it up. Uh, but at any rate, with the uh, Casualties of Cool project, the first disc was Casualties of Cool, while the second one had uh, some leftover stuff. As well as the uh, the second disc, the outtakes, the stuff that wasn't used from Ghost, so it makes sense. So Sky Blue, the traditional Devin Townsend project, um, project of the, the disc, so uh, we know what to expect from Devin Townsend. Okay, we really don't. We know to expect the unexpected from Devin, we know kind of what he's capable of. This is an album that reminds me stylistically of, of what he was able to do on albums such as Addicted, a little bit of accelerated evolution, and in a way, a little bit of um, of deconstruction. So there's a lot of different ideas that can come from this. He still has that progressive mind. He still has that wall of sound philosophy. Not much has really changed in that regard. However, this album really captures the true essence of what the Devin Townsend genius is really all about. So people who are coming in and are coming into Z2, people who are afraid that it's a sequel and you'll be lost. You won't be. In fact, you're actually helping yourself by picking up this album, principally because of Sky Blue, principally because of the fact that you are going to be getting an experience of what Devin is all about and what Devin really is able to accomplish. I love that the first track on this album is just called Rejoice, <laughs> because that's what we do whenever a new Devin Townsend album comes out, or Devin Townsend Project album comes out. We rejoice. We're happy. We can't wait. We are thrilled to hear what this guy is able to come out with because it has almost universally been good. It's almost universally been something that is very appealing to us. He universally seems to have all of our appeal and our attention because he's a very attention-grabbing, high-octane musician that is high-octane regardless to whether he's writing stuff that really suits that or if he's writing something that could be considered to be haunted Johnny Cash songs. Actually, he's a cool reference. I like Rejoice because it sets up this album beautifully. I like the fact that it goes right into the next track. It's a seamless transition. And I like the fact that that's something that con uh, continues further on down the album. But Universal Flame is what we need to talk about. This song beautifully really illuminates the Devin Townsend legend. This is one that really showcases everything that the Devin Townsend project is all about. It's one that really feels very traditional. It's one that definitely feels exceptionally uh, very typical for a Devin Townsend Project song. But it's beautiful. This is easily one of the highlights of this album. It's probably a contender for Song of the Year if we gave out that award. Because this is a track that you're going to instantly find yourself at a roadblock with. Because you want to repeat it over and over and over again. It's catchy. It's really, really good. It gets stuck in your head. You tap to it. The vocals are beautiful on both ends. The clean male, the clean female vocals. Everything about this song just clicks. And it's a wonderful experience. It's one that definitely... I, I see a lot of people, I foresee and foreshadow a lot of people <coughs> being really stuck on this song. <coughs> just like that's stuck in my throat. This also showcases his diversity. It showcases his ability to kind of transition styles right in the middle of a record, which is something that Devin does have the capability of doing. During the Devin Townsend project, 
This is not something that he did as often, because he was trying to write the four albums in four different styles, as four different parts of himself. So that's something that didn't happen nearly as often. However, the diversity came from his exploration of the said style, and that worked too. Nothing felt stale. Nothing felt really overdone. Nothing felt like it was decomposing as you were going on through the album. But on this, considering it has basically all the sides of the Devin Townsend Project, you have high octane. You have breakneck speed, you know, shredding. You have soloing, but you also have the calm. You also have the very harmonic, the very beautiful sides with tracks such as Sky Blue. And there's a little bit of parody in here, too. There's a little bit of parody. The chorus to Sky Blue actually reminds me of an Usher song. An Usher song. DJ's Got Us Fallen In Love Again. And the very next track reminds me of You Spin Me Right Round Like a Record. Now, this is something where it's just a couple of things. It's like an introduced idea. And this isn't something that Devi shies away from. This is, in fact, something that Devi embraces and actually throws into songs as a bit of a tease, as a bit of a light heart. It's something that he adds to his compositions to give them more depth, more value, and to make it fun. He takes serious ideas and is somehow able to transition them into something that has a little bit of fun within them. Think of Frank Zappa. Think of how, how kooky he was. Think of all of the different ideas that he was able to really encapsulate within his songs. Think about how he was able to have ridiculous lyrics, yet at the same time write beautiful pieces of classical music. Think of how he's able to use that skill. Devin does the exact same thing. And that's what makes Devin such a talented musician, one that is very well respected within the heavy metal community, one in which the heavy metal community collectively holds its breath until the new release comes out and then exhales with just praise. Sky Blue is one that I feel near the end starts to slug off a little bit. But Before We Die is a special song. It's a special song for a lot of people considering the Universal Choir competition. Something that he had where you could actually sing uh, portions of songs and you could become a part of the album. You could actually be put on the album. There's actually a member of the Cover Killer Nation that's on this. It's not me. You'll have to ask him. This is a great song, and this is one that, after about four minutes, five minutes of this eight-minute trek, it cools down into an outro that moves, us, uh, that moves you to the final track, which is very touching. And then, there you have it. I feel as though this is the album that people will listen to second as opposed to first. Because I feel like people have been clamoring for Z2, the Ziltoid saga, for so long that they'll immediately jump the disc to first. They'll immediately have that desire, that drive to know what happens next and to see what Devi is able to really do with it because the first album was just so nonsensical, ridiculous, and fun and filled with such great music for a concept release that it was just impossible to deny it. But I don't want people to really sleep on Sky Blue. I don't want people to rest on their laurels with this disc because it's got trademark variety. It's got fantastic flow. It has enough, really, uh, uh, enough of a wide plethora, kind of a poo-poo platter of the Devin Townsend Project experience that if you listen to this album and you enjoy this album, you might as well just literally walk into your record store Find as many other Devin Townsend records that you can. Buy them all. Because you've got a little bit of everything. You've got the smorgasbord with Sky Blue. So you might as well get the rest of them. Because if you like Sky Blue, you will enjoy the rest of them. All in all, for this disc right here, and I will be judging them individually, and at the end of the, uh, the Ziltoid side, Dark Matter, I will give the final score. All in all, I would give Sky Blue an 86 out of 100. It's an easy album to listen to, but it's one that has so much variety and so much really, really packaged inside of it. It's one that really gives you the full experience. And that's something that really makes this an album that has a high replay value. It's one that's going to have many people coming back over and over again after they finally hear it for the first time, after they digest the hell out of Dark Matter. So let's talk about Dark Matter. Let's do that. So click on the link. I'm sure there's one around here somewhere. Don't wait. Do it now. 
I'm just going to ramble incoherently for five more seconds. <laughs> All right.